Binary lambda calculus is a technique for using the lambda calculus to study Kolmogorov complexity by working with a standard binary encoding of lambda terms and a designated universal machine. Binary lambda calculus is a new idea introduced by John Tromp in 2004. Background BLC is designed to provide a very simple and elegant concrete definition of descriptional complexity. Roughly speaking, the complexity of an object is the length of its shortest description. To make this precise, we take descriptions to be bit strings and identify a description method with some computational device or machine that transforms descriptions into objects. Objects are usually also just bit strings but can have additional structure as well, e.g., pairs of strings. Originally, Turing machines, the most well-known formalism for computation, were used for this purpose but they are somewhat lacking in ease of construction and composability. Another classical computational formalism, the lambda calculus, offers distinct advantages in ease of use. The lambda calculus doesn't incorporate any notion of I.O. though, so one needs to be designed. Binary I.O. Adding a read-bit primitive function to lambda calculus, as Jaton did for Lisp, would destroy its referential transparency. Unless one distinguishes between an I.O. action and its result, as Haskell does with its monadic I.O., but that requires a type system, an unnecessary complication. Instead, BLC requires translating bit strings into lambda terms, to which the machine can be readily applied. Bits 0 and 1 are translated into the standard lambda booleans BO equals true and B1 equals false. True equals false equals which can be seen to directly implement the if-then-else operator. Now consider the pairing function applied to two terms m and n. Applying this to a boolean yields the desired component of choice. A string s equals b0, b1, bn minus 1 is represented by repeated pairing as which is denoted as the z appearing in the above expression requires some further explanation. Delimited versus underlimited. Descriptional complexity actually comes in two distinct flavors, depending on whether the input is considered to be delimited. Knowing the end of your input makes it easier to describe objects. For instance, you can just copy the whole input to output. This flavor is called plain or simple complexity but in a sense it is additional information. A file system for instance needs to separately store the length of files. The C language uses the null character to denote the end of a string, but this comes at the cost of not having that character available within strings. The other flavor is called prefix complexity, named after prefix codes, where the machine needs to figure out, from the input read so far, whether it needs to read more bits. We say that the input is self-delimiting. This works better for communication channels, since one can send multiple descriptions, one after the other, and still tell them apart. In the I.O. model of BLC, the flavor is dictated by the choice of Z. If we keep it as a free variable, and demand that it appears as part of the output, then the machine must be working in a self-delimiting manner. If on the other hand we use a lambda term specifically designed to be easy to distinguish from any pairing, then the input becomes delimited. BLC chooses false for this purpose but gives it the more descriptive alternative name of nil. Dealing with lists that may be nil is straightforward. Since, and one can write functions m and n to deal with the two cases, the only caveat being that n will be passed to m as its third argument. Universality. We can find a description method u such that for any other description method d, there is a constant c such that no object takes more than c extra bits to describe with method u than with method d, and BLC is designed to make these constants relatively small. In fact the constant will be the length of a binary encoding of AD interpreter written in BLC, and u will be a lambda term that parses this encoding and runs this decoded interpreter on the rest of the input. 
You won't even have to know whether the description is delimited or not, it works the same either way. Having already solved the problem of translating bit strings into lambda calculus, we now face the opposite problem. How to encode lambda terms into bit strings? Lambda encoding. First we need to write our lambda terms in a particular notation using what is known as de Bruijn indices. R encoding is then defined recursively as follows, for instance, the pairing function is written in de Bruijn format, which has encoding. A closed lambda term is one in which all variables abound, i.e., without any free variables. In de Bruijn format, this means that an index i can only appear within at least i nested lambdas. The number of closed terms of size n bits is given by sequence A114852 of the online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. The shortest possible closed term is the identity function. In delimited mode, this machine just copies its input to its output. So what is this universal machine U? Here it is, in de Bruijn format. This is in binary. Oh one oh one oh 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 one one oh one oh 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 one oh one oh one one oh 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 one 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 oh 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 one oh one 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 oh oh one 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 oh 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 one oh one 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 oh oh one 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 oh 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 one 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 oh 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 one oh one one oh one one oh one 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 oh oh one 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 oh 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 one 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 oh 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 one oh one oh one 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 oh one oh one oh one one oh one oh one oh one oh one oh one oh one one oh one 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 oh one oh one oh one 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 oh one one oh one one oh one 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 oh 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 long. A detailed analysis of machine you may be found in complexity, concretely. In general, we can make complexity of an object conditional on several other objects that are provided as additional argument to the universal machine. Plain complexity k's and prefix complexity kp are defined by theorems, concretely. The identity program proves that the program proves that the program proves that where is the Levenstein code for x defined by in which we identify numbers and bit strings according to lexicographic order. This code has the nice property that for all k, furthermore, it makes lexicographic order of delimited numbers coincide with numeric order. Complexity of sets. The complexity of a set of natural numbers is the complexity of its characteristic sequence. An infinite lambda term in the infinitary lambda calculus. The program whose first 100 bits of output approves that while a simple variation proves this is even shorter than Haskell's 23 byte long nubby dot gcd 2 symmetry of information. The program proves that where is a shortest program for x. This inequality is the easy half of an equality known as symmetry of information. Proving the converse involves simulating infinitely many programs in dovetailing fashion, seeing which ones halt and output the pair of x and any y, and for each such program p, requesting a new code word for y of length. The craft inequality ensures that this infinite enumeration of requests can be fulfilled, and in fact code words for Y can be decoded on the fly, in tandem with the above enumeration. Details of this fundamental result by Chaitin can be found in Equine. The term concatenates two copies of its input, proving that applying it to its own encoding gives a 132-bit Quine compression. So far, we've seen surprisingly little in the way of actually compressing an object into a shorter description. In the last example, we were only breaking even. For though, we do actually compress by bits. What could be the shortest program that produces a larger output? The following is a good candidate. The program, of size 55 bits, uses church numerals to output exactly ones. 
that beats both GZIP and BZIP2 compressors that need 344 and 352 bits respectively, to describe the same output. Halting probability The halting probability of the prefix universal machine is defined as the probability it will output any term that has a closed normal form. With some effort, we can determine the first four bits of this particular number of wisdom, where probability 00012 equals 2 minus 4 is already contributed by programs 00100 and 00101 for terms true and false. BLC8 Byte size I.O. While bit streams are nice in theory, they fare poorly in interfacing with the real world. The language BLC8 is a more practical variation on BLC in which programs operate on a stream of bytes, where each byte is represented as a delimited list of 8 bits in big endian order. BLC8 requires a more complicated universal machine. The parser in the U8 keeps track of both remaining bytes and remaining bits in the current byte, discarding the latter when parsing is completed. Thus the size of U8, which is 355 bits as a BLC program, is 45 bytes in BLC8. Brain Fook the following BLC8 program is an unbounded tape brain for interpreter in 829 bits. The formatting obscures the occurrence of double-digit indices, a 10 on line 1, a 15 on line 2, and an 11 and 3 12s on line 3. These indices are marked with underlines to distinguish them from single-digit indices. This provides a nice example of the property that universal description methods differ by at most a constant in complexity. Writing a BLC8 interpreter in BrainFook, which would provide a matching upper bound in the other direction, is left as an exercise for die-hard BrainFook programmers. The interpreter expects its input to consist of a BrainFook program followed by a, followed by the input for the BrainFook program. The interpreter only looks at bits 0, 1, 4 of each character to determine which of plus less than greater than it is. So any characters other than those 8 should be stripped from a brain foot program. Consuming more inputs than is available results in an error.